Hey everybody, we're out here at Newman Lake in Spokane County. Newman Lake's just 30 minutes northeast of Spokane, and we've got a great show for you today. We've got special guest Jeremy Affelt out here today, fishing with some guys from Youth Outdoors Unlimited. How'd you guys end up here? We bid on an auction uh, for Youth Outdoor Unlimited, and I'm with the Wildlife Council from Spokane, the Inland Northwest Wildlife Council. Right on. And so we have a table every year at the Youth Outdoors Unlimited, and I just happened to bid on this trip. Craig Dowdy and Scott Imholt of YJ Guide Service were kind enough to donate the trip for Dan and Dave to win and Jeremy to come along. And you guys have done some other stuff with youth hunts as well. Correct. In the past we have. We do a lot of uh, kids and a lot of disabled hunts. So this was an easy thing for you guys to support, right? Oh, Different definitely. Habits. Every year we do something. So it's either veterans, kids, or, or both. And Craig, you've been out with Northwest Fishing Reports on a few adventures. Correct. Yeah, what do you got for us today? Today we've got some tiger muskies. Um, they're kind of a hybrid between true muskies and a pike. So they're sterile, they're hard hitting, they're fun to catch, and they can get big. Have any of you guys fished for tiger muskie before? Never. Never. That's why it was such an appealing thing to come out here and fish uh, for tiger muskies. I've never done it either. I'm kind of looking forward to it. What are, what are we going to see today? What are we looking for? Um, we're going to be fishing a lot of docks. We'll be fishing some drops, some weed beds. Um, pretty much you can fish this whole lake. You can start right here, fish the whole thing. I mean, the whole lake is good. As I understand it, this is one of only a handful of lakes that Washington's developed as tiger muskies for fisheries. Correct. There's six or seven lakes, I believe, in total. So Craig's going to give us some hot tips on how to get after these tiger muskie. Hopefully we'll get some great footage and all of us will come home with some uh, wonderful memories. So keep watching, coming back with some more action. I want to try to catch something. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go fishing, he yeah. says. I just want to go catch something, not talk more about it, Rob. Uh, we'll go over a little bit with this fish while we have them. If you look at the dots and the dashes go up and down, on a muskie they go up and down. On a pike the only difference is these turn sideways and the dots and dashes go this way. The main things you want to remember out here is this lake is mainly a swimming lake over a fishing lake. I mean there's still lots of bass, there's large mouth, small mouth, there's trout, there's the tigers. So um, we're going to fish a lot of docks. We're going to fish some open water. We're going to fish both sides of the boat all the way through. But what you need to remember is these docks have ropes coming off of them. Um, so just be aware when you're casting up next to a dock, look at it really close to see where the ropes are. So just an FYI, when you're out here, you will hook a lot of ropes. So just something, something to be aware of. And usually as soon as you slow it down and speed it up, that's pretty much when they'll hit it. So when we get our see the where the float this floating stuff is out here coming up. Um, at that point, we're in a giant weed bed. So in and out for everybody. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's one. Bass. What do you got going? Oh, I think I got a little bass or something, or a rock, or spun my thing sideways. Oh yeah, I spun it out. He uh, hit it, he just up. didn't get a hold of him. <laughs> right on, a little action already though. Yeah, he smacked it, he just didn't get pinned. And you're right off that dock there, huh? Yeah, I was just right up next to that boat. Actually, probably 90% of what we're gonna catch will be, a, will be tigers on those, on those especially. Yeah. It's probably it probably was more than likely. Keep the tip up fairly high and just barely run it. Cause like I said, once we get some sun going, you'll be able to see them actually following it. Do you feel that tick? Pick it, pick up the speed a little bit. You see one? Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you're always looking down when you're getting ready to bring that last 10 feet. Make sure you're watching it because they're going to be right behind it. If they are, stop it. 
let it flutter back to them, and usually they'll hit it, if not snap it a couple times, to get them to, to get them to take it. And you see how it, you can see the white, and it transitions into the dark along shore. Any of that area is going to be, you know, you know it drops off right there. That's where they'll be sitting generally, is right on the edge of that drop off. But yeah, if you can see them following it in, keep them coming. Don't pull the lure out of the water, leave it short, and just keep it moving. A lot of times they will hit it right on the boat. I mean, right next to it. There's one. Oh. Seem to have found a small tiger, so not very big, but it's a start. Wow, he's really, he really got that thing. Oh, oh. oh. oh now he's fine. Yeah. Sorry. And that was a goes. catch and release. Yeah. <laughs> got hung up in the net. I thought he jumped right in there. Oh yeah, they're mad. They, like I said, they do Sorry, not Craig. like this. That's okay. I didn't mean it to turn it loose that quick. It just, well, at least we got some, a picture of him. At least he's not a monster, so it is a start. Um, like I said, they're they're out in this deep water. You just never know where, when you're going to hit them. Wow, that so. came on sudden and uh, right off the boat. Yeah. And they will, they're not scared of the boat, so um, they will hit right to it. So make sure you, you finish your cast right to the boat. We're fishing with, it's not super heavy rods that we were putting out here. No, and you don't really have to for these. I mean, they're up to 50 inches. So um, this lake has most of them in the mid, probably mid 40s is probably the biggest. So yeah, you don't need big heavy tackle, just a good drag and and um, you'll be good to go. Yeah, you can. That's what you want, nice long casts. Longer the better. It just gives it a little bit extra. You know, you got that fluorocarbon leader on there still, but they roll so much. They just alligator roll on things. So a lot of times they'll be all wound up. You'll just be reeling them in because they've already spun on it. Yeah, all right. That's a pretty good one there. Oh. Yeah. Sails over. Okay. That. Oh, we got one. Nice. He gave me a little light tap, and I just stopped it, and he just smoked it. A little tap, and then. Yep. Little tap. Chain speed. Yeah, it was just a little tiny tap, and it felt like a little tiny fish touched it, and, and I just stopped my spoon, and it just smacked it. it. That's about a 33-incher. Well, there's one person taking care of on their first one. There's one. Well. We found another one. You want to net him? No, I won't net this one. Okay. I'll just pull him up next to the boat and I'll release him since he's not very big, but we'll get him up here and get some. Oh yeah, he really takes that right over. Oh yeah. They're not little fish, even the small ones. Look at the hump. Yeah, and a lot of times they'll get really pretty colors on them. I'm just gonna grab him and just release him right away. Oh, he's got, he is all, he's, he's, he's all, all arched bent up. over. They bite you? Oh yeah, and they've got lots of, um, ah, oh, oh damn it. Oh, That's a, mm, right get you good? Yeah, it could have been worse. It's hooked on that back hook. Well, I don't think I would have managed that without some colorful language, Craig. Well done. That was pretty good. Huh? <laughs> well, I just soon not put him in the net, so I'm trying to get this out of this bill. Oh. <laughs> and hung back up in another one. There you go. There is a release. Swam right away. Look oh, at yeah, that. that Two in the boat, three on already. Nothing to it. Ow. <laughs> Fish. Oh, yeah, he's got a fish on. <laughs> oh, whoa, I thought I had weed. No, he's got a good fish on here. I got a good fish on.
thought I had, I don't know about the dragon. No, that's fish, a nice dude. fish. <laughs> that's a big, a lot bigger fish. I, I said it like twice. Oh! It's not a boat. It's not a boat. I need to cut it off. What do you think about that one? That's a beauty. Look at the color oh, on them. It's a real subtle take. It was tap, tap. I said it, I thought I might be in weeds. It was still a while, look at the mouth on that. Holy cow. Jeez, man. Craig, you gotta be very careful when you're down there. There's all those teeth flashing around. Teeth and hooks, all kinds of stuff to get hung up on. Sure, they'll throw that spoon at you, won't they? Yeah, they will. Once I had him, he really tried to take off. State record is, it's, in the 40s, but the state record now, it's got, well, you gotta be 50 inches to keep them, so. 50 inches? you get 50, you get a state record. Go ahead and hold that, we'll get a. And you said there's chances of that in a couple lakes here in uh, uh, Eastern Washington. <laughs> Pretty fun stuff. You're gonna have to do it without the glove for me. Okay, I'm a big boy. So, reach right down in here. So it just gets far up towards its face, towards its tip of its nose. Reach up in there nice and tight. All right, bring him in, get him in the boat. Get yeah. in the boat. Holy cow, look at that thing, it is thrashing. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Tiger Muskie with Craig Dowdy and YJ. Well, holy cow. Good job, guys. Look at those things. One. That's vicious. Look how beat up its tail and fins are. These are tough fish. Wow. Right yeah. on, man. Let's get you a picture. How many? Three. Three. Oh. Got snapped off once. Lost another one at the boat. Two? Two and a whole bunch of hits. Oh, yeah. We were right before it rained. In? We were all yeah. over it. I got one, too. You guys got to beat a 39 incher though. 39, biggest. How big? 39. I'm a 20. Uh, I just want to make sure you guys were okay. Yeah, we're catching fish. That's <laughs> getting hits. Yeah, beat it. You're ruining our area. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Generation Alive and what they're doing, not only here in Spokane but around, around the country. Generation Alive, <clears throat> we started this nonprofit. Of, uh, I started it in 2005, and uh, eventually it molded into its, what it is now, and that's just, you know, what we do is we, we do a lot of servant leadership, we train a lot of leaders, we go in and take kids in the elementary through college, and we just try to equip leaders to understand uh, poverty in their community to underst understand what the pains of poverty looks like, the causes of it, and how we can alleviate those pains through active acts of compassion. Mm -hmm. So we do things, different things, program rise, whether it be we're known probably the most for our hunger initiatives called Something to Eat. Okay. We go into different schools and and we public schools. Yeah, public schools. We go into churches. We go into homes. We go into businesses, and they order the meals up and then we bring all the, the equipment, we bring all the meals to package and they package the meals and they, they raise all the money. It costs 25 cents a meal. Wow. Um, we've done about almost 3 million meals uh, since over the last three, four years. Then we, we fight human trafficking and then we also do a thing in the schools which uh, I really enjoy, the action teams. And we go in and, and we have we have interns that go in and they work with, uh, like middle school, might work with the elementary, elementary, middle, and then high school works the middle school on down. And we have college, so a lot of times there's college graduates or college kids that are overseeing all of it. Mm -hmm. And we go in and we talk about what it means to be a servant in your community and how you can serve your community through, you know, acts of compassion. And it's not just the hunger initiative, it's not just the human trafficking. Sometimes it can be, you know, these kids now are going off and figuring out different ways to do things, whether it be, uh, learning what it you know what it looks like to be homeless right now they're doing a lot of summer school programs we have a summer camp I guess you could say program sure. and, and they're, they're they're going and, and dealing with different they look at different areas uh, in our community that struggle and they identify the need 
yeah. and then they kind of put plans together. Put plans together, and they do they do it through and these action teams, these summer camps. It's all done through understanding and learning the process, learning what poverty looks like, learning what it looks like in your own community, and then how can we have a plan to, to help alleviate those pains, and what can we do about it as as individuals and as as a community. And that's kind of what we've been a part of and we do it not only here we do a lot of it in san francisco as well in the bay area we're looking to expand we just uh, recently received an office and we're about to do a hiring of a, of a person down there in, in san francisco oh, very uh, cool. to help with us down there and then uh, expand from there yeah we're pretty excited it's a lot of good things are happening that's great and you, this idea came to you later in your career when you started wanting to uh give back to your community is that right yeah, and I just everywhere I went, I saw you know poverty, I saw homelessness, I thought I saw pains, and I saw people that kind of looked at as athletes as we don't understand them, and we don't understand what life's like because we have this cush life, and mm -hmm. and I wanted people to know that I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else, and I do understand the pains that are happening, and 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 I and you're right, I don't have a lot of the same problems that they have, but I understand it, and I don't just. You know, I don't, I don't want sympathy, I don't want empathy, I want compassion, I want to act on it. I, and right. I don't just feel bad and then walk away. I feel bad and say, okay, well what can I do or what can a group of people, other people do to get, when they come together and they see that happening and say, what can we do to help alleviate that pain? Or what can we do to help make whatever situation they're in, you know, not necessarily go away, you're not always gonna make it go away. You're not always, it's not always gonna go away, but you can help at least bring a little bit of peace to that person or joy to that person because you just simply love them because they're a human being and that's kind right. of what we're all about. That's very cool. Uh, I got to attend your fundraiser last year and one of the things that resonated with me is the idea that the solutions you're looking for, it's not stuff you're necessarily trying to do, the solutions are in those next generations, these upcoming generations for real change, you know, you're training future leaders. Yeah, that's in right. Community. Yeah, and that's what the, that's really what it's all about. Because the leaders today, they're dealing with the issues of today. The leaders of tomorrow are going to deal with the issues that are upcoming. And if we can help head those off, or we can help kids understand before they even can become community leaders in the sense of like business owners or political people or doctors or lawyers or whatever they're going to become in life, if they can understand what the poverty looks like and what it is, and help they can and, and hopefully get get a plan in their mind to come up with plans as right. they've achieved their goals and have the, as they achieve their destiny. Equip them. Equip them with some successes. They're going to have a reason why they succeed and right. they're going to have a reason why they, 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 they exist and if they can kind of start shaping and thinking about their lives that way, I think a lot of, a lot of issues that go on our, in our communities around the country, around the state, around the world will go away. It's very cool and I, I'm very pumped every time I come away from a meeting. Uh, with Darren Duty yeah. or Marty, your team you put it together. They're doing good stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, I want to thank you for being out here fishing with us. I know you're an avid outdoorsman. I yeah. really enjoy your company and the work that you're doing. Um, it, it's awesome. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you, man. I've had a great time. Nice and hot, successful. Let's get back to some fishing. Okay, this is your typical Newman Lake Tiger Muskie. Um, like I said, it's a mix between a true, true muskling and, and a pike. So they're sterile, they're put in here just to clean up garbage fish. The difference is you can see the dashes are straight up and down on this fish. So it goes dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. On a pike, a straight pike, the dashes would be sideways on it, horizontal rather than vertical. So when people say, you know, what have I caught? You can tell that by exactly just looking at the dot, dots and the dashes on the fish itself. So this is a perfect example of what you catch out here at Newman Lake. Lots of them this size um, and bigger. So we're on them pretty good today. So we'll get this guy back in the water and see what we can do. Trying to stop the bleeding. Seems like if you're not bleeding, you're not tiger fishing. So we're bleeding, so it's a good thing. You bleeding? Nope. I'm just uh, throwing lures in the water, Rob. See how he says that? Yeah, Rob. Have you heard? He stole his fish. Is what I know. Out. I was right next to that lure, and all of a sudden he took, he threw right in next to me. It's unbelievable. I know. Yeah, it's called greedy fisherman. It'll come back to haunt him. 
Right now I'm just catching a sunburn. It's fine. That's because he's fish hogging. It's because, yeah, people are fish hogging, you're fishing. My lure is probably fake. <laughs> That's a hot dog, not a lure. That's a piece yeah. of bacon on there. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're supposed to have bait on there. Right? Yeah, you probably had, yeah, Rob has, has dipped in blood to him or something. He's <laughs> dipped in like anti fish lure. Fish repellent. Yeah, fish repellent. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only one who hasn't caught a fish yet, but Rob keeps throwing his pole or his line in. Catching more fish. It's fine. Yeah. What friends are for, Jeremy? Probably. Just, I'm just pushing you to make you better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty excited. Yeah, it's exciting that yeah. way, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing like good friends. Right. Here, let me take your fish away from you. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Okay. The one he caught, I got it after he was right over here boiling the water. You can see him swimming around in the water a little bit, and Dan netted it and brought it in, and we got a good shot of all that. So. Hi, I'm David Clough, 2017 president of the Inland Northwest Wildlife Council. We're the largest conservation wildlife group in the, in the state of Washington. One of the great things we get to do is put on the Bighorn Show every year. You might see at the Interstate Fairgrounds in Spokane. I wish you'd all come out and see us and all the great things that we do at the council. Thank you. Dude. Oh, that's a nice fish. Jerry, you, get, you, you got him. That's right. Bottom of the ninth, baby. You Bottom of the ninth. <laughs> well, nine hours into the fishing experience with Northwest Fishing Reports, I finally got my first, <laughs> first tiger, <laughs> tiger muskie. <laughs> but hey man, it's the first time for everything. Finally got him. About pulled me out of the boat because I was not prepared for it. They got some muscle, don't they? I was lulled to sleep. They're, they're kind of powerful, aren't they? Yeah, they're awesome. The fight's pretty good. That one hammered that one, though. When I caught him, he just flat out about yanked the pole out of my hand. They'll do that sometime, right, Greg? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one just it didn't even really follow anything. I didn't feel a bite. It just yanked my pole. I thought I actually caught like a rock or something at the bottom. First tiger muskie ever. Craig Dowdy, YJ Guide Service. Yep. Northwest Fishing Report. Good times. Every time I fish with you, I catch one fish, but it's usually a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. And, last uh, time. What was the last one we caught? Sturgeon. We caught a big sturgeon last time. Yeah. You you like the kind of unique fish? I, think, I do. The know? one with like weird teeth. <laughs> right. You know, the monster fish. Possible, possible dinosaur reptile crossover. You know, it's exactly good. Right. It's good. All, all found here in Washington, the old home home state. Yeah, no, I didn't even know these existed until I saw them cut today. It's good times. All right, well, thanks for coming out, bud. Yeah, it's great. Bottom of the ninth, though. You Bottom ran it to the, the end. You, you ran it to the end. Yeah, Made me work a little too hard. You gotta keep you interested. My back's cramping. You gotta keep. <laughs> okay. That's right. Okay. <laughs> gotta keep yeah. you interested, bro. Ah, uh, nice fish, man. Oops, sorry, He'll to, swim away more. I would uh, let go of his gills there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You got a tiger by the tail. That's it. Tiger by the tail, Jeremy. Most people can't say they've had that. No. Hey, everybody. I wanted to take a second to talk about Youth Outdoors Unlimited and the good work they're doing in the community. Dave, you're here today because of Youth Outdoors Unlimited. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm Dave Clover with the Inland Northwest Wildlife Council, and every year at the Youth Outdoors Banquet, we buy a table and and uh, do a sponsorship. It's a great organization that takes care of disabled and terminally ill children and give them the chance of a lifetime to go fishing and hunting and uh, get them out in the outdoors and give them a long-lasting memory for them and their families. And we really support that. Yeah, it's an awesome work they do. They take whole families out for up to a week. I understand. Uh, bear hunts and all kinds of stuff. Right? They do. A friend of mine's son was actually just in Canada doing a bear hunt with them and the taxidermy is actually provided for the family. Uh, the young Moyan uh, Zach, he had his uh, bear mount hung up at the Big Horn Show in Spokane and, and was very proud of it. Uh, got to go to Canada with his dad and the whole family. They outfitted him and he had a great time. It was a great guide service. It provided it just like today, uh, providing us a nice fishing trip to catch some tiger muskies. Uh, last year in Spokane was the first ever 
Yep, that's smoking. the one that I bid on this trip here, and uh, I knew it was going to a good cause, and I definitely support those people over there, and I know Cindy Carpenter that helps run that organization uh, does a great job with the kids and definitely want to support them. Well, thanks a lot for coming out today, bidding on that at Youth Outdoors Unlimited Auction, and uh, getting after your tiger muskie, Dave. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it, man. man. It was great trying to catch something new. They never caught a tiger muskie before, right. and it was an awesome day. My brother got to come up from Oregon and help uh, yeah, join in. He caught a couple it, of them. It was really a lot of fun. It's good stuff. It's a good time. All right, thanks a lot. That's our day at Tiger Muskie on Newman Lake. Jeremy Affel, thanks a lot. Craig Dowdy, you got us on the fish. Dave and Dan, thanks for coming out here. And of course, Scott Imholt, he's keeping the boat steady for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Good job. All right. Hi, I'm Scott Imholt with YJ Guide Service. Find out more about musky, bass, walleye, burbot fishing, all on our guide service, uh, yjguideservice.com. Or you can call Craig at 509-999-0717. Pretty wild fish. <laughs> all right, let's put her back. <laughs> Oh, oh good. Perfect. Okay, don't move. <laughs> oh, That's about the best scenario as we could get. <laughs> <laughs>